grace is rich and free, O oh God, be merciful to me. To God we admit how our sins make us feel. I smite upon my troubled breast God, we admit our complete dependence on him to save us. No gifts, no deeds that I have done can for a single sinner's own. To Calvary alone I flee, O oh God, be merciful to me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. I'm going to have to ask you to open up your, your red hymnals for this next psalm to page 71 in the front of the red hymnal. First reading is from Isaiah 52. What the Lord does is he allows the prophet Isaiah to give a nice summary of the work and the blessings Jesus would give. Look, my servant will succeed. He will rise. He will be lifted up. He will be highly exalted. Just as many were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured that he did not look like a man and his form was disfigured more than any other person. So he will sprinkle many nations. 
And kings will shout, shut their mouths because of him, because they will see something they had never been told before. And they will understand something they had never heard before. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root from dry ground. He had no attractiveness and no majesty. When we saw him, nothing about his appearance made us desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man who knew grief, who was well acquainted with suffering, like someone from whom people cannot bear to look at. He was despised, and we thought nothing of him. Surely he was taking up our weaknesses, and he was carrying our sufferings. We thought it was because of God that he was stricken, smitten, and afflicted, but it was because of our rebellion that he was pierced. He was crushed for the guilt our sins deserved. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all have gone astray like sheep. Each of us has turned to his own way, but the Lord has charged all our guilt to him. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that is silent in front of its shears, he did not open his mouth. He was taken away without a fair trial, and without justice. And even of his generation, who even cared? So he was cut off from the land of the living. He was struck because of the rebellion of my people. They would have assigned him a grave with the wicked. But he was given a grave with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, and no deceit was in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and to allow him to suffer. Because you made his life a guilt offering, he will see offspring. He will prolong his days. And the Lord's gracious plan will succeed in his hand. After his soul experiences anguish, he will see the light of life. He will provide satisfaction. Through their knowledge of him, my servant will justify the many. For he himself carried their guilt. Therefore, I will give him an allotment among the great, and with the strong he will share plunder, because he poured out his life to death, and he let himself be counted with rebellious sinners. He himself carried the sin of many, and he intercedes for the rebels. That's what Jesus has done. Also from John chapter 19. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. Then bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. We'll sing the next hymn.
These wonderful words of Jesus. Comforting statement, it's done. Jesus is declaring to all of us, nothing more is needed. We said it in our confession of sins. There is nothing we can give. There's no acts of service that we can do. Because simply by Christ, we are forgiven. And that's what Jesus declared when he said, it is finished. The work of paying for mankind's sins is done. You and I, Adam and Eve, David and Solomon, all of them have been forgiven. Whatever the sins may be, whether they're ranging from the Apostle Peter, who denied knowing who Jesus was three times, whether it is David and his murderous way of living and in his adulterous way of living, whether it's Adam and Eve saying, you know what, you gave us perfection, God, but we think there's something better out there, and it's going to come to us from that snake who's telling us to eat this weird fruit that you said don't do. We're going to do it. We're going to follow our own desires. It is finished. Their sin, your sin, whether it's that horrible nastiness or that small, uh, insignificant in our eyes. Your Savior Jesus is telling you they're gone. Your sin paid in full by what he did there on that cross. You don't need to beat yourself up. You don't need to hang your head low. Because Jesus picks you up and says it is finished. Your sins are gone. And that changes us. Our consciences are powerful. And our consciences at times really like to replay every bad thing that we've done so that we end up feeling like Judas Iscariot who went out and hung himself. Our consciences want us to feel beaten and down. But now you get to tell your conscience, it is finished, Jesus said. Sometimes you have friends or family who like to shame and guilt you for things that you've done in the past, and now you get to tell them, it is finished. Jesus himself says, I am forgiven. If God himself declares it, if God himself won it for you, there is nothing and there is no one who can ever hold any sin over you ever. That's the beauty of what Jesus did. It is finished. Your sins are forgiven. Turn to that final word. From Luke. Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last.